go to Nate Lerner, who is the executive director of Build the Wave. He joins us from New York. Nate, great to have you with us. You know, a lot of advocacy groups have praised the move, but some people are saying Facebook should have done this a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. This is certainly long overdue. Um, if you look at how Facebook was manipulated, not just by Russia, um, but utilized by these white supremacists and white nationalist organizations over the years, there's a clear trend uh, where they've really been you know, a safe ground for them. They've been able to organize effectively. The Charlottesville rally in large part was utilized there. They've normalized um, a lot of the rhetoric and a lot of the behavior of these groups. And they've spread hate. They've spread violence. Uh, and that's not what Facebook is about. It's not how the platform should be utilized. And it's like shouting fire in a crowded theater. It's, it's not um, how free speech is intended. So what's the mechanism that Facebook is going to use to differentiate these different forms of, of speech? And, and what are the potential pitfalls of this? Mm -hmm. So there's two ways that Facebook filters its content. Uh, number one is through automation. They look for, for certain keywords, for, for certain trends and behaviors and flagged accounts. Um, then also, unfortunately, they are, are is through manpower. Um, they have literal individuals on the other side of the screen uh, checking flag content. It's a very thankless job, um, but someone needs to do it. And it's how they filter out a lot of the inappropriate content on their platform. They'll be applying both in removing this content. What's interesting is with the automation, they'll be using a lot of the same rules and policies for their AI to guide their AI that they use with terrorist organizations and to find content posted by terrorist groups. Now, this is telling because most white nationalist groups also happen to be terrorist organizations and thus should have been removed long ago. So, Nate, we, we know that this applies to Facebook as well as Instagram, but there are concerns that perhaps the users that support the spread of this ideology will just, there will be an influx of them that will go to other networks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that's why it's on those other networks to start identifying these bad actors and removing them as well. Twitter has taken similar steps um, although I'd argue they could go much further, um, especially in stopping the spread of fake news from, from both sides. Um, certainly, you know, Reddit is, is a breeding ground for, these, for um, a lot of these groups and these individuals. Also, um, really, honestly, any platform like this that's a privately held company has a responsibility to its users to protect them from this kind of language, protect them from the spread of this kind of hate and this violence. They have a... a, a um, they, they have an, um, an obligation to the, co to the, the country as well. Um, you know, I'm all for free speech, but on these platforms, it's not about free speech. It's about the user agreement that you consent to with that platform. And so Facebook has every right as a private company to do this. And so do these other uh, social media platforms as well. And they should, they should do that. They should take that, that um, into consideration. All right, Nate Lerner with Build the Wave out of New York. Appreciate you being with us. Thanks for that. Thanks so much.